Welcome to Linux in the Shell, Episode 12, The Tail Command. My name is Dan Washko, and I will be your host. As a reminder, I strongly recommend, if you have not already listened to the audio portion of this or read the website, to do so at your earliest convenience, because this merely shows examples of using Tail. The website and audio go into a little more detail about the actual application. So without further ado, let's carry on. Tail command is a highly useful command and is a staple in every system administrator's toolkit. What it basically does, if you look in here I have some files, it'll by default print out the last 10 lines of a file. So you can see if I were to do cat test 1 or if I can do cat and test 1 to show you the line numbers also, you see that there are 21 lines in there and tail and test one oh, just tail test one shows the last ten lines I could pipe that through cat if I wanted to with cat and and you see that it just shows the last ten lines now you notice there I kinda messed up but if you pass it the n which is number of lines an n and a value let's say five it'll just show the last five lines or twenty five it'll show the last 25 lines. Now, of course, there aren't 25 lines, but it shows the whole file. We can change that to 15 if we wanted to, and it shows the last 15. So, for instance, if I did tail and 30, Atlas shrugged there, you see the last 30 lines of that file. Cat N, and you can see right there, last 30 lines total come from that file. Now, you can also, instead of specifying like 20 lines or 10 lines, you can specify to start from line with a plus. So let's say start from line 15, and it'll tail line 15 to the end of that file right there, the last five lines, or seven lines, so to speak. So from line 15 to the end, it shows all those lines. Now, I... I you're saying, well, why do you keep showing me this this file with 10 to 30 on there? What's so big about that? Well, I, I wanted to do this because there's another option to tail. Instead of specifying by lines, you can specify by bytes. So if I did tail C3, which is byte size, 3 bytes, test.1, it'll show the last 3 bytes, and that's 30 right there, that last number on there. If I would just show one, you wouldn't get anything. You just get the new line. If I show two, you get zero. Three, you get 30. So if I go back to nine, you're going to see the last three numbers. So that's by bytes. Now similarly, I could do from the ninth bit on, nine bytes on, and show you the full line. So you're missing the, the first three digits up there, first three lines of the text. So C works that same way. And you can specify if you wanted to, uh, instead of just bytes, you can specify K for kilobytes, but you're not going to get anything in there. So let's let's do this. Let's do tail C 9K from 9K on, Atlas Shrugged there. That's a little bigger. Well, that's not going to go... That is 3,000... 209 bytes, you're probably not going to get the full amount of bytes there, but if I did plus 1k, I should get something back. Or if I would just do 1k, you would see the last 1k, 1k there, value of bytes. So that's that's how you can control uh, looking at the output. Now, uh, that's all fine and dandy, but where it comes really in hand for system administrators is the Oops, the F or follow command here, right there, just like that, the F or follow command. That becomes very handy. So, for instance, I have a loop file here, catloop.sh, and basically all that does is just outputs 1 up through 70. It will do every second. And I did that for the intent purpose of showing you how follow works on here. So if I did loop.sh, and I'm going to pipe that to a file called uh, tail 
dot test. Okay. Now I'm going to split my screen here, split view, top to bottom. So now what you can see, if I go over to another one, and I do cat tail dot test, you see that it's growing every second. Well, if I do tail f tail dot test, you'll watch real time as it grows. Very handy. And it keeps going and going until I kill this process. Then it just stops because it's not growing anymore. But if I were to start it up again, the file's truncated. Now notice what happened there. Okay, what had happened was that when I started loop test again, notice my redirection here. It's overwriting. And when it overwrote it, it, it deleted all the contents. The file became smaller. And it reported that the file was truncated. So if the file size changes and shrinks when tail is running, it will alert you right here that the file is truncated. So if I do tail test this way again, you notice that it doesn't alert because of over I have appended to, not overwritten. So it doesn't alert me to that fact. So that is how tail works on a follow. Now you'll notice, let me let me kill the tail here. And let me kill this. Now you'll notice that there was an option to file when I did man tail. There was an option here with follow. It's name or descriptor. By default, we're, t we're following by descriptor. So if I were to do this, uh, tail f test.tail, okay? And I were to start the loop again. Oh, wrong test, wrong, wrong tail. Tail f te tail dot test. <laughs> Got to name my stuff different. You notice that it's going on. Now let's say, for instance, I kill this. Okay, so it's not going on anymore. Now I'm going to go move tail dot test to tail dot test dot old, and I'm going to restart this loop process. Do you see right there? Tail is no longer continuing on. But if I switch over to here and do a tail f tail dot test, that's continuing. So what happened? Well, you, I changed the name of the file, and when descriptor is being used, which is default for for f for follow, tail will follow the change, the change name. So I moved that file, so tail followed it. And it continued to tail the, the original file when it changed names. I can change that by doing this. Let me go back over to here. All right. Tail, capital F, test, tail, dot test. Okay, so that's there. Now, when I start this up again, notice how that's going? Going back, it's back where we started before. Let me repeat the process. Move tail.test to tail.test.old. Gone. Tells me that tail.test has become inaccessible. Doesn't exist anymore. I start it up. Bammo. It's writing the tail.test as being accessible again. That's because name, or capital F, which is the same as tail follow equals name right there stays with the file that you named it doesn't go on to the renaming of the file it just stays there so that's very handy to know if you are working on log files that tend to be rotated or changed a lot so if you want to make sure that you're going to still monitor that same log file specify the uh, the name option or the capital F now if you look in here the name option capital F it's the same as follow name retry. Okay, now that's very important. Because if I would have just gone like this, follow equals name test or tail dot test, I'm going to do this exact same thing. Notice that it's working there. I kill this, move tail dot test to tail dot test dot old, and it might not pick it up again, but it did. So just be aware of that. If you, 
you could lose it if you don't specify the retry. What retry will do is it'll try and keep hitting that file or opening the file or keeping an eye on that file until it appears again. Um, so just be careful. If you notice that tail isn't working the way you expected, uh, just use the retry and it'll try and reconnect to that file again. There's another handy option. Let's let's start this out again. Let's uh now let's let's get rid of all these tail. Whoop, not that one. Let's get rid of all these tail files and let's start this again. Let's uh tail start this loop. Let's tail dot test and let's do tail f tail dot test. What's going on? Now let me show you another thing here. Uh that would that would continuously follow that tail now let's go over here and do psef grep loop to find out the pid so that's the pid is 1528 i'm going to make sure i have that in my in there so this loop going on i'm going to kill this and now to tail i'm going to specify pid equals 152 what was that 15 One five two zero eight, one five two zero eight. That's what I thought it was. So now, as this is continuing on, should I kill this process by doing? Well, I'll just quit it. You kill the process, it stops tail. So tail will continue with the pit option right here that I specified. Will continue to monitor the output until that PID no longer exists. Now, there is a dash S option that you can apply that works with the PID option. And what it does is it specifies a sleep interval to monitor the PID. So if I were to specify a sleep interval of 10 right there. So let me start this again, tail.test, and let me get the PID 15302 and let me adjust this 15302 three zero two so now what this is going to do is when I start it up it's going to look to see that that pit is there then it's going to sleep for 10 seconds and look to see if that pit is there again and then sleep for 10 seconds so as this is going on you can see it's going up I'm going to kill this when it gets to about 30 seconds and you'll notice that there will probably be a bit of a delay so it's the pit's gone it stopped but there is a delay because it's still sleeping so somewhere between 1 and 10 seconds it's going to quit all right because it went to sleep now sleep is not going to work outside of a pit because sleep old tail used to monitor the file every second and look for changes new tail uses the i notify of the kernel so it's not it's not time based it's based on changes to the file system look it up on the website uh what i'm talking about there you can monitor multiple files if you wanted to if i wanted to do tail atlas shrugged and tail test right there you notice well it's easier if i unsplit my view right there you'll notice that it spits it out with a header file before each entry that it that it does so that's that's important right there it's good to know but you can you can get rid of that with the queue or quiet and notice how it's not there anymore so if I return my split here let's say uh, let's split the view again split top to bottom and let's let's do tail F Dan and test okay so I got two files there's no file that exists for Dan right now but if I were to come down here and do echo one to Dan and let's start this again because that file did not exist when I tried this so I got one in there. Now, let's start up loop, sh loop, and send that to test.1.txt. And you'll notice that that's going on. Now, as I'm doing that, let's open up on the bottom here. Another, oh, that's that going on. Let's do, let's go. Echo, hello there, fellows, to Dan. 
And you'll notice that it put it out there and it has the header. So that's how the header option works. Now we could have suppressed that with quiet, but that's that's handy to do. If you're monitoring multiple log files, it shows you the headers. That's pretty much tail in a nutshell right there. Let's see, did I forget anything? No, I don't see that I did. Uh, tail is absolutely a staple in a system administrator's handbook and very useful for monitoring logs. Um, I'm Dan Washko. This has been Linux in a Shell, episode 12. Remember to head over to the website for the full write-up on the tail command to get uh, a complete understanding. And I will see you again. Oh, I could have split it three ways instead of doing it. Ha! <laughs> anyway, uh, I will see you in a couple of weeks. You have a very good time. Bye.